Hey GED students, I had one of my patrons send me these three questions from Patreon. So these are from Flora who supports Light and Salt every month to make sure that we can get the resources to you that you need in order to be successful. She sent me these three she was working on from the Order of Operations with Negatives worksheet that we just made and these three had her stumped. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you know, how would I even know this is an order of operations problem. It's easy to know when you're doing worksheets, right? It says order of operations at the top. You're going, oh, I know what to do with the order of operations, but it wouldn't, you know, say that on the GED, your problems are gonna be all mixed up. So how do you know? Well, this is what I know. Look at this. I have an expression, all these mixture of mathematical symbols and operations, and I'm supposed to simplify it, fi it. I'm supposed to do this implied math here. And you can see that it has more than one operation. So anytime I have more than one operation going on and I'm trying to do that math, I'm trying to simplify, I need the order of operations, guys. So you need to know the order of operations. It literally needs to be like breathing for you in math to just perform the order of operations in the correct order. If it's not yet, you don't have enough practice, okay? So first step in the order of operations is to take care of any groupings. And yes, groupings do include parentheses, but they're certainly not the only kind of groupings. You know, we also use brackets and then insides of all kinds of symbols, like insides of square root symbols or insides of absolute value symbols, but not only that, also tops and bottoms of fractions are groupings, okay? So a lot of ways we can group numbers. After that, we're supposed to take care of any exponents. And I'm talking exponents and their inverses, okay? So like powers, those little floating numbers, and their inverses, the roots or radicals. Okay, next we're gonna take care of multiplication and division. Uh, again, that's multiplication and its inverse. You know, an operation and its inverse are always part of the same step. So uh, in this case, multiplication and its inverse division are the same step. And then finally, the final step is addition subtraction. Again, addition and its inverse, its opposite. Okay, so those are the four basic uh, steps we take, the order we go in when we simplify. So looking at this first problem, what I see right away, what stands out to me is that it's a fraction. Unlike students who see a fraction and panic, I see a fraction and go, oh, they've divided this problem into two separate groups for me already. I have a numerator up top and then a denominator on the bottom. And because those are grouped, up top and on the bottom, I'm going to start with those groupings as if they were separate individual problems. So let's examine the numerator first, that top. Now there's still two operations up there. If you read this, this says 4 plus 2 times negative 6. And according to the or order of operations, we have to do any multiplication and division before addition. Even within a grouping, we follow the order of operations. So I am going to multiply first. So this is what I'm looking at doing first, two times negative six. So two times negative six, uh, if I, let's think about it this way. I borrow $6 from you two times, okay? Negative six is like borrowing or owing money. And if I'm timesing it by two, I do that two times. So I'm gonna owe you now a total of $12. So I'm gonna get negative 12. Now I haven't yet dealt with my four or my plus sign. Again, I'm not gonna deal with the divide until my groupings are done. The fraction bar means the same as divide, so I'll leave that alone. Okay, but I will deal with the bottom of my fraction. It's a totally separate grouping, and so I can work it totally separately. So five minus seven. Now be careful, here's a place where students make a lot of sign errors. Five minus seven is not the same as seven minus five. In this case, I only have five things and I'm trying to take away seven. You might say, Kate, that's not possible. Well, think about your bank account. You only have $5, you go and spend seven. Oh yeah, it's possible. You end up in the negative, okay? And so I'm gonna end up at negative two. All right, now let's keep going. We've got a grouping still on the top that's not finished yet. You can see up in that numerator here, there is still more work to do, that addition. So let's go ahead and do that. 4 plus negative 12. And again, I like to think of positive and negative numbers with money. That's the easiest way for me to think about it. So it's like I have $4, okay? And to that, I'm going to add a debt of $12. So, I mean, just think about it. if you and your bank account had $4 and then you have a debt of $12, you're going down, you know? So 3, 2, 1, 
uh, zero. So I just went down the first four, but I got to go down 12. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So let's see, I was at zero. Negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm at negative eight. All right, now I haven't dealt with the bottom of my fraction yet. Um, I haven't yet divided by negative two. And then now I'm finally gonna do that. And y'all, I need you to stop being intimidated by fractions. A fraction bar is just a way of saying divide. So negative eight divided by negative two, that divides perfectly. We won't even have a fraction left anymore. That is four. And remember, when you're multiplying and dividing, two negatives basically cancel. It's like, how many negative twos are there in negative eight? Well, there's four negative twos in negative eight. All right, so this one simplifies to four. All right, let's take a look at the next example. And I can totally see why this one was messing with uh, flora because a lot of times students don't know what's going on here um, because they're not used to some of these symbols. So let's go ahead and just read this before we even start this. So this is negative seven. Now, do you see how this negative seven is shoved up against this operation with the absolute value bars? They're shoved up together, they're multiplying. So this is negative seven times the absolute value of two to the fourth power minus three to the third power. Woo, that's a lot going on. No wonder she was feeling confused. But again, remember, we start with groupings. We start with insides. Even if you're not totally sure what absolute value bars mean, you can see that there are some numbers that are grouped within these absolute value bars. That's where we should start inside the grouping. Now, of course, again, we see more than one operation going on inside the grouping. We see powers. Uh, those little floating numbers are powers, and we see subtraction. But remember, exponents happen before addition and subtraction. So let's take care of our exponents. Okay, let's get out a different color. If you struggle with math and symbols, a lot of times using colors can help you. So I'm going to start with my exponents. 2 to the 4th power and 3 to the 3rd power. I can go ahead and do these at the same time since they don't share any numbers. So remember, 2 to the 4th power is not 2 times 4. 2 to the 4th power means 2 multiplying by itself 4 times. Another common student error is just to multiply 2 times 4 and say 8. No, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So of course, 2 times 2 is 4. And another 2 times 2 is 4, and I'm multiplying those together. So 4 times 4 is 16. So if I multiply 2 by itself 4 times, I actually get 16. Same thing with 3 to the 3rd power, guys. Do not write 9. You'll make me cry. This is not 3 times 3. This is 3 times itself 3 times, or 3 threes multiplying. So yeah, 3 times 3 is 9, but then I need to multiply by another 3. That's 27. All right, so I did my um, exponents first inside that grouping, and now I need to drop down everything I haven't used. So I haven't used the minus sign, haven't used the absolute value bars, haven't used the negative seven. Guys, I say it all the time, and it is so true. I've never met a student who's bad at algebra yet, but you guys tend to be crappy secretaries, okay? Do not drop your symbols. Make sure that anything I haven't used is still within the expression. All right, now, there's still math to do inside that grouping, so I need to continue to attack the inside here. Only thing left to do is subtract, so I'll do that. Once again, I have 16, and I'm taking away 27. Now, this one would be hard to do with a number line. You know, these are bigger numbers, and so I'm going to use the fact that I know that we're moving in opposite directions because this is positive 16, and then I'm taking away 17. So I can do just subtraction in my side work. I do get 11, but be careful. It is important that you also know how to determine sign. Look back at that problem and see, I only had 16 and I took away 27. This is not positive 11 that I got, this is negative 11. Okay, so I got negative 11 from this piece right here, so I use this up. But all the rest of those symbols that are there in black, I have not touched yet, so they will still drop. I will still have absolute value, and I will still have negative 7. All right, again, watch your secretarial skills. That is what trips you guys up every time. All right, now what shall we do next? Now, this is tricky because the next thing we're, we're going to do 
actually doesn't seem to appear in the order of operations. So absolute value bars are not discussed. So just like um, the square root symbol, which can work very similar to absolute value bars, where it does, um, uh, it can group and then you do the operation afterwards. Same thing here. We could do inside the absolute value bars and then we take the absolute value of our answer. So that's what we need to do now. We need to take the absolute value of negative 11. Now, all the absolute value does, I mean, literally all it does is make your answer, whatever it is, positive. Um, it turns it into distance and distance is never, ever, ever negative. And so you basically, all you're going to do is you're just going to take away that negative sign there. So I'm going to end up with positive 11. Now I used up those absolute value bars. They're done. So don't, you know, don't write them down anymore. We just took the absolute value of negative 11. We took all that. So the only thing I have left from up above is negative seven. And a lot of students get like freaked out. Like, what are these two things doing? This negative seven and an 11. I don't have an operation between them. Well, remember that in algebra proximity when things are shoved up next to each other it means multiplication this expression up here said negative seven times it's shoved up against the absolute value bars so negative seven times the absolute value of negative 11. so we took the absolute value of negative 11 but we haven't done the implied multiplication yet so i'm going to replace that with parentheses to say i'm multiplying Whew tricky. And now we'll do negative seven times 11. If I, you know, borrow $7 from you 11 times, I am going to end up seriously in debt. I'll be at negative $77. That is the answer there. Okay, on to the next one. We're almost done. So again, let's read this sucker. Negative two to the fourth power minus four squared times negative two to the fourth power. Now, that being said, Notice that I read when these are just out front of a number, I read it as negative, but when it's between two numbers, I read it as minus. An important distinction as we're going to do the order of operations here, okay? Now, a lot of students will tell me, Kate, you have to start in the groupings when I ask where to start. So they want to come here and they look at these parentheses and they say, parentheses mean groupings, start here. Uh, but guys, remember, parentheses are actually used for more than one thing in uh, algebra. They're used for groupings, but they're also used for multiplication. So if you look inside the parentheses, that's where the grouping would be, inside. There's nothing to do here. It's just a negative two, okay? So there is no grouping here to start with, so I'll move on to the next step. I'll deal with any exponents, okay? So I will deal with this, not because it's a grouping, but because it's an exponent, negative two to the fourth power. This is also an exponent. Now be careful. Exponents are super duper duper weak without parentheses. So let me take away my circle so you can see the parentheses. So this one has parentheses, which means this fourth power is acting on this whole thing. But without parentheses, the exponent only works on the number, not the sign, which means this square is only for this four. And this fourth power is only for the two, okay? So if you don't have parentheses around that negative sign, the negative is not included in the exponents, okay? It's treated like multiplication division or addition subtraction. So go ahead and take care of those exponents first. So again, two to the fourth power does not mean two times four. It means two times two times two times two. We already figured out that was 16. Let me get out another color. 16 for that piece. And four to the second power, this doesn't, this is the only numbers that this works on is four and two, you guys. But this one does happen to be the same thing because four times four is also 16. So I get 16 here. And then negative two to the fourth power. Now that one has the parentheses around the negative. So the negative this time is included in the operation. This means negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Something cool is going to happen here because a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative two times negative two is actually positive four. And the same thing happens here. Negative times a negative. Negative two times negative two is positive four. So I actually end up with four times four, just a positive 16 here. You might say, how is that different from before? Well, remember, you're supposed to drop any signs that you haven't used yet. In this one, I haven't used the negative yet, so it's still there. I haven't used this minus yet, so it's still there. Whew. Okay, now, 
what do we have going on here now? We have negative 16 minus 16 times 16. So I have subtraction and I have multiplication. According to the order of operations, I should do the multiplication first. So let's attack 16 times 16. And now I regret my life decisions for making this problem because I, oh, do I have this memorized? Mm, I might. Let's go ahead and work it out just to make sure. So six times six is 36. Six times one is six, seven, eight, nine. One times six is six. And one times one is one. Add that up, six, 15, 256. All right, so 16 times 16 is 256. And again, notice how I just put my beautiful answers underneath here. I, I don't, my scratch work, I really don't care where you do your scratch work, but don't mess up your lovely mathematical grammar here with scratch work, okay? So I get 256 there, and now I need to drop down whatever I've used. So all I used was 16 times 16, so I'm still gonna see that minus, the 16, and the minus. Woo! So now I have negative 16 minus 256. Now, look at this. My bank account balance is already negative. It's negative 16. And then I go and take some more money away. I subtract some more money. I take away another $256. Because these are both negative here. I'm already negative and I'm going more negative. I am actually gonna end up adding these numbers here because I'm adding debt to debt. I have some debt and it's more debt. You say, isn't this a subtraction problem? Well, yeah, it is, but I'm already negative and I'm subtracting more money out. And so my debt is gonna end up totaling. So six plus six is 12. I get seven and I get two. So now I'm at 272, but be careful. I was in debt and I went more in debt. I'm not, I don't have $272 in my account. I'm at negative $272. I'm in a lot of trouble. All right. Woo! You can see why Flora was challenged by these problems. They are tricky. So glad we got the chance to work these out. And clearly, just watching this video is not going to help you for your math test. Okay? I'm really good at the order of operations. I practice all the time. But you would not just watch me drive and then go jump on the highway. Okay, if I were teaching you to drive, yeah, you'd watch me once or twice, but then you would practice, practice, practice. You need to do the same thing here. Uh, this is a complex skill that takes practice to achieve fluency. So you go check out the order of operations with integers worksheet. You go try it yourself with these combining negative numbers plus the order of operations and make sure you're adept so that when test time comes, you're not getting in a crash remembering how well Kate drives, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, if you have any questions about this or any other math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer it. And if you want to support Light and Salt Learning like Flora does by becoming a patron and get your questions answered first, then go ahead and head on over to patreon.com slash light and salt learning and go ahead and support the ministry. All right. Happy learning.